Hey everybody, Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool bouquet wallpaper inside of Blender. And this is pretty simple to do. We're just going to be using one particle system for this, and then we're going to go into the compositor, and that's where a majority of this effect is going to come from. We're also going to use a random image to add the color to this. And the great thing about this is after you create the simple setup, you can add in any image and start to get different variations of this bouquet wallpaper. So this is just another example that I have. It's the exact same scene. All I changed was the image we used for the color. And it looks pretty cool still. So let's jump into Blender and get started. First thing we want to do is delete the lamp. And we're going to switch over to the Cycles engine. And this cube here is going to be our domain for the particle system so that we can create the bouquet effect. But right now it's a little too small, so I'm going to press S to scale it up, then 5 and press Enter. Then I'll go to Front View and Orthographic View, and press Control alt 0 on the numpad so that it snaps our camera to our view. And from Top View, I'm going to select our camera, and I'm also going to switch over to Wireframe Mode by pressing Z. We're just going to drag our camera in so it's right inside of our cube, just like that. Now I can go back to our camera view, and you can see that this cube has a lot of empty space above and below our camera's view. And when we add a particle system, that means a lot of the particles will not be rendered out since they're out of the view of the camera. So to fix that, we can tab into edit mode with the cube selected and then press S and Z to scale it along the Z axis and I'll just type in 0.5 and press enter and that looks much better. So now I can tab out of edit mode and we're going to create our particle now which is just going to be a simple icosphere. I'm just going to move that out of the way so it's not rendered. Let's open up a new window for our node editor and give it a new material and let's de delete this diffuse shader Instead, I'm going to add in a emission shader. I'm also going to add in a color ramp and plug that in. And I'm also going to add in a object info node and take this random output and plug that into the factor. And by doing that, every time we have a different icosphere, it'll take a random value on this color ramp and assign it that color. So let's go into rendered view just so we can see this. I'm going to duplicate this icosphere, and you can see every time we duplicate it, it's a different color. And I want to change the color ramp settings so that majority of the spheres would be brighter. So let's increase the value of this black slider to 0.25. And let's just move this white slider to a position at 0.75. And I'm also going to change the uh, interpolation from linear to b-spline, just so it's a little smoother. That's pretty much it for the material of the particle, so let's just delete all of these icospheres. And with our cube selected, I'm going to close this window now. We can go to our camera view, and I'm going to give the cube a new particle system. I'm going to make sure I'm on the first frame of the animation, and I'm going to switch the number of particles from 1,000 to 5,000. And instead of having uh, particles emit on every frame up to frame 200. I want them all to be emitted on the first frame, so I'm going to change the end frame to 1. I'm also going to scroll down to the render settings and uncheck emitter, and I'm going to switch it from halo to object. We'll select our icosphere. You can see that each of these particles now are our icosphere. I'm going to increase the random size to 1 and I'm going to increase the size of the particles to 0 0.025 so that they're pretty small. And right now you can see that all of these particles are emitting from the sides of our cube but what we want is for the particles to actually be inside the cube so to fix that we'll just scroll up here to where it says emit from and switch it from faces to volume. And now if we press shift Z and go into render view you can start to see all of the spheres and I'm also going to change our background color to black so that it looks a little better. I'm just going to check border as well. And yeah, that looks pretty nice. So now to get the bouquet effect, what we need to do is add in uh, the depth of field effect. So if we select our camera and go to the camera settings here, 
If we scroll down, you'll see depth of field. And if we press Shift Z and we increase the aperture radius size, you can see that everything immediately blurs out. And that's because we don't have a focus object. So let's set that back to zero. And for a focus, let's just add in an empty plane axis. And I'm going to go to top view and move this a little closer to right about there. So this is where the focus of our picture is going to be. So let's go to camera view again, select our camera, and under the focus setting, let's select our empty. And now if we go to render view, you can see that still nothing has changed. But now when we adjust the radius, things that are closer to the camera and farther away start to blur out and only things that are in the same area as the focus object will stay in focus. So I'm going to increase this radius to about 0.25. That looks pretty good. And right now all of the spheres have a circular bouquet look, but I want it to look more like a pentagon. So if you adjust this blade's value to a minimum of 3, you'll start to see the different shapes. And then 5 will get us that pentagon shape, which I want. So that's looking pretty good. And usually when you render an image with depth of field, it'll be really grainy with a low sample. So I'm going to actually render this out at 250 samples. And I'm going to pause the recording now, and I'll come back when it's done rendering. Alright, so it's done rendering, and that looks pretty good. It's still a little grainy, so if you don't like that, you can increase the samples. But it's not really going to change that much. So let's just jump into the compositing layout right now. Let's check backdrop and press control up arrow to go to full screen mode. I'm going to press N to get rid of that tab. Let's just move this there. Let's press control shift and left click to add in our viewer node so we can see what we're doing. And yeah, let's jump into the compositing now. So first thing we need to do is press shift A to add in a, let's see, what was it? It was a bouquet blur. Yep, that's what it was. You can see when we add that, it immediately switches to a more square bouquet, which isn't what we want. So to fix that, we can press Shift A and go to Input, and there's a bouquet image. And we can just plug that in and make sure it has five flaps. You can see those look more like a uh, pentagon now, if we took it away. So that's what we want. And I think this blur is a bit too strong, so I'm just going to adjust the size to about 0.5. I think that looks much better. And now to add our color, what you want to do is find an image that you like, which has a lot of color variation. So I'm just going to add this picture of some donuts, which I've made in Blender before. Because I think they look pretty nice for this effect. And we're just going to add in a blur, and we're going to switch it to fast Gaussian, check relative, and then just make it 50% by 50%. And then we're going to add in a mix node. Let's just plug these in. We're going to switch it to color. So basically, all of the bouquet particles are getting their color from this blurred out image here. And right now it's a little dark, so I'm going to add in a RGB curve. Let's find that. I'm just going to increase this contrast value to up to there. Now let's duplicate this uh, color node and switch it to add. We're just going to take the output of this blur node and plug it into the image. You can see we're starting to get a really nice blur. But if you don't like the color that much, what we can do is I'm going to press shift and left click and drag so that it combines those and adds an extra point right there and I can add in a let's see color balance node right in here and I can adjust these values so that we can get something that looks pretty cool so let's try something like that maybe And you could play around with these settings until you get something that you like. It's all up to your preference. I think that's looking pretty good. 
And if you've seen one of my previous tutorials, I showed you how to create a cinematic node group. And if you haven't watched that, I'll put a link in the description below. But we're going to add that in right now, right in between there. And let's tab into this node group. And I actually just want to delete these last couple nodes. And I don't want to press X to delete, I want to press Control X so it still maintains that connection there. And let's set the settings to 0.75 and 0. And if we were to mute the cinematic node, you can see the difference that it's adding to our image. That looks pretty nice. And one last step, if you wanted to make this pop a little extra, let's just plug this in there. Let's exit that. And if we come over here to the color management settings, we can switch it from default to film. It just makes it pop a little bit more. I think that looks pretty nice. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this bokeh effect. If you want, you can try out different images. All you would have to do is duplicate the color balance, blur, and the image nodes and find a new image. I'm going to try this space image which I have. And I also made a tutorial on how to make this space scene in Blender. If you want to see how to make that, I'll put a link in the description as well. Just take this color balance node, plug it into the cinematic, and then view our last node. And that's looking a little weird because the colors are too strong, so let's change that. I'm going to put that there, maybe move that there, that there. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. And if you don't like the effect that the cinematic node's going, adding, you can always decrease it. I think I'm going to keep it at about 0.75. But yeah, so now you have two different looking bouquet wallpapers, but they both look really cool. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And also, if you make any cool wallpapers, please share them with me in the comments below. I love seeing what you guys create. And that's it. Thanks for watching.